we completely redesigned the neglected steel sailboat that we bought and transformed it into a brand new one. But that left many people questioning if our custom restoration would fail or float. This is Luke and I'm Lori and we're asking a professional to take a look at our handmade boat and let us know if she will be able to sail us around the world. In this episode, we're going to be talking about all the changes we made and whether or not the Lahakai is going to sink or sail. And hopefully, we can put all our worries to rest. And if you want to see the Lahakai put to the test in the water, subscribe to our channel, like this video, and ring that bell. It's a totally free way to keep the journey alive. Is the Lahakai going to sink? Hello, my name is Gustavo. I am a marine engineer here in Brazil. I work with consultants in private boats, making research and certification of builds and everything. If you want to change the motor power, if you want to change some layout of your boat, I work with that part. Yeah, I am also an expert by the Brazilian Navy on accident investigation and my main work here at this boat is to make sure that every step they are doing is following the safety instructions of the building and to make sure that when they are sailing around nothing will go wrong. <laughs> Gustavo had visited us earlier and given us some valuable advice about fixing our welds on the exterior of our hull. Not only to increase the security, but also the speed of our boat. Well, one of the things that you first visited the boat, you mentioned the welding and we took that right to heart and, and you can actually already see we're working on it. So when we actually sandblasted it, you could see all the tiny pores. So when it came down to it, we took your advice and we just immediately started sanding down all the welds to get rid of any textures. We reinforced anything with, with more welding and then to get the best surface that we could possibly get. I, I think you did the right thing. Yeah, just to sand all the excess, kill all the porosity. Mm -hmm. And now with this anti-corrosion paint, it's the first step of a lot of layers that we have here until the white paint. We need to remember the people at home that this is just one of two sides of welding. Yeah, when we say that we are sanding here, we don't mean that we are taking out all the welding strain, but just the excess, okay? Mm -hmm. If we see by the inside, we still have a, a pretty strong weld cord. From here, when we got the water flowing, this is where you need some pretty smooth surface. Yeah, because you've got all this um, stuff of the, the welding, mm -hmm. then you Textures lose the texture and, and everything. You start to lose a lot of speed because of the drag. And okay, we are not a racing boat, but you know, you need to get somewhere. So when we purchased the sailboat, this is the original keel and it has two tons of lead weight. When we found it though, we discovered that on the inside, there's a large portion of it was dedicated to a diesel tank. Okay. And here on the inside, we cut it open and we knew that we weren't gonna use diesel because we're gonna be a fully electric boat. So we actually filled it with steel grit. So it's a recycled steel grain. Oh, okay. um, and then sealed it off from, from any oxygen. So what do you think about our solution for adding ballast? Yeah, it's mainly a, a good idea. Already going to the waste distribution, and this is a little bit behind from the center of Bowen. We need to take care about the weight. And even because of the stability of the boat. Mm -hmm. Because we know sailing boats, they heal when they are sailing. So as much weight as you've got below the waterline is good for the stability. And what do you think about using steel grit as a ballast? It's a good ballast. Yeah, it's heavier than concrete, for example. You just need to take care about corrosion, oxidation of this material. 
but as long as you fill it up to the top and it's sealed, yeah, it will corrode, but just a little bit, yeah, and I don't think it would be a problem, yeah, it's well made, and in a few years from now, I advise you to make a hole and just check it, but not right now, mm -hmm. like right now it's, it's really fine, wait uh, five years at least, to see what and happens. then you open to see, mm -hmm. yeah. Otherwise, you are just wasting job, wasting time for something that apparently is well done. And you know, um, corrosion is not instantly, and you've got a well closed uh, ambient. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's well it's welded rather nicely. Um, we yeah. don't have any apparent holes anywhere. Yeah, if you've got uh, oxygen exchange mm -hmm. uh, somewhere around here. Then it might be a little bit of concern, mm -hmm. but no, it's a kind of a sealed coffin mm -hmm. for the steel. So and you mentioned before that, uh, like, if we were to do this again, that mixing it with with the cement. With cement, room. we could be using also um, ishi. I don't know how to say in English, but it's this black stuff that you added on the asphalt. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. You melt it. Uh -huh. And then you you pour it here. on top. On top, kind of a or seal. Or mixed the words on top. Ah, yeah, it on, on top. top. Then it seals everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's pretty useful. Uh, maybe around the shipyard, we will see some kind of this to um, to hold the ballast at the bottom. Is the two main stuff that they use it. Yeah, that's a good that's a good tip. So when we got the boat, we didn't think we were actually going to change the superstructure, but as we ripped off the wood, it became very clear that it just was littered in holes. There was like tape holding things shut. So it just became apparent that it would be much easier to replace it. And to, when we replaced it, we decided, well, Luke is really tall, so we're gonna we're gonna raise it up. So we raised it up 15 centimeters towards the stern and 10 centimeters forward. And to compensate that, we decided that we were going to change the entire superstructure for three millimeter thickness instead of the original four. So what do you think about us raising this superstructure? There's some stuff that we need to check. For example, you made it some steel thinner, yeah. but you added a uh, reinforcement. So then we make sure that when you are stepping on here mm -hmm. by the outside, it won't bend. Okay, so this is nice. About the reduction of the um, thickness, it's good because you are raising something away above the waterline. So it's not good to have much weight. It's a nice uh, exchange that you made it. Another thing that we need to watch out is the mast fold, if I may say. Yeah. Um, because, you know, when you are sailing or even when you are docked, the weight of the mast and all the, um, the strings that hold it, they made some effort in the way of this direction, mm -hmm. right? Kind of in the same direction that the, the mast weight is going. And if you don't make this kind of adjustment, so I can see that you added this yeah. part. So when we added this, it, it created a gap, obviously, in between the original yeah. group, if you will, and the new one. So we added this extension to this piece. It's actually a stronger hole than the original pole. Yeah. We put in this eight mm -hmm. millimeter plate to hold. So it's a square plate that actually creates the support on top of this. Everything was pre-welded together and then welded onto this piece even before we put on the roof. And then we extended these supports and put in these you know, lateral supports yeah. as well. Do you think that it distributes the weight well enough I think it is well made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't see porosity on the welds. This is really nice. And this idea to put thicker plates on the surroundings of the mast is really nice because you put some pulleys here and you need to anchor them in some somewhere that is really strong. So if you imagine the final assembly, you have the mast and you have all the pulleys to direct the cables for you. This is well done. Yeah. When we go to the um, finishing part, you put all the wood and everything. This ugly part mm -hmm. will disappear. Yeah, and you have just a well made structure. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Here below the cockpit, we made radical changes. <laughs> we pretty much ripped out the entire cockpit and rebuilt one. Underneath the aft deck was a very large motor, it's probably like 
um, 300 kilos to 400 kilos. Um, I think also you made a good exchange for the space, for the maneuverability uh, on the outside. You, you brought a nicer cockpit, if I understood before. And you added weight here because uh, now we've got more steel than before mm -hmm. yeah, just because of the new shape but if you are taking out 300 kilos just for the motor or the engine um, it's nice to for us to start, start to think about um, who will be the added weight to compensate it mm -hmm. and avoid that the boat at the end um, the bow uh, will be lower mm -hmm. yeah, than the stern so here we are in the cockpit, and now it feels really spacious, but I wish you could have seen it before. It was really very narrow. Actually, you couldn't stand here. The seating was here, so the cockpit actually started here and forward. So we really extended it as to utilize every single centimeter yeah. of this place. Storage areas now, we actually created this storage area for throwing wine in. And the biggest modification we have here is we extended the stern. the stern. So yeah, the transom ended here, but we added a lot of the rest. Right. And it houses the, the components rudder. for swim and and yeah. This is the main part. Now you've got a, a really strong rudder mm -hmm. in housing. Yeah, yeah instead like of just one. two two points to hold it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah before nice. it had um, the, the rudder stock went straight down with uh, the rudder exposed directly. So okay. it's just the rudder you could see with the stock and they had the tiller right on top. So so all of this is new. Yeah, added weight <laughs> here, added weight is it's good. Yeah, we always remember that we are taking out the motor, yeah, the engine. And we are substituting by a small torpedo engine. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to add a weight here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just all the steel plates and everything, you, you are going on the right direction. We just avoid, need to avoid here to don't overload this mm -hmm. idea and then make it heavier, way heavier than we need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By now, it's nice. Yeah, it's a good distribution. Of course, we are not weighing everything and putting on a table chart mm -hmm. or, or something like this. But, you know, by intuition, by everything that I've been seeing around, I think we have a nice balance. There's, there's no limit to things that we haven't built. And we also built a hard dodger. We wanted a hard one versus a soft dodger. We see a lot of people changing dodgers. They get ripped. The the plastic eventually yeah. is impossible to see through. So we wanted to build our own hard dodger. This is made out of three millimeter plate and pretty simple construction. Yeah, I think that this kind of structure is for those who actually sail. They are not just at the boat for showing. <laughs> yeah, because when you got rough seas on those small boats, you have got you've got slamming of water, you've got watch out and you know waves and this make some safe for your cockpit and avoid a lot of water that could be getting inside the boat. Mm -hmm. So this is nice. It's worthful the, the weight that it brings, it added to the boat. For people who actually want to use the boat, this is a nice deal. Yeah, you won't regret. Our projects were a little bit over ambitious, but I think this one kind of is the cherry on top. We end up redoing the entire bow. Okay. This bow sprit didn't exist. We actually created this by hand. We cut it out with a, a blowtorch. Yeah. It is made from eight millimeter sheets okay. of steel. And we created this shape the way we want it to be able to hold the anchor and actually have a pass through underneath the deck into this custom made anchor locker. For the winch. We actually, yeah, the anchor locker came out back here. We actually pushed it all the way forward to maximize the front of the boat and actually cool. gained about 30 centimeters in the cabin itself. Cool. So what do you think about our our overly done bow? <laughs> no, this is where you've got to be strong, okay? Mm -hmm. Because uh, a lot of the percentage of both crashes, the part that you will be crashing is the bow. So it needs to be strong, yeah? And that part mostly because when you're anchored, all the boat is being held by 
that part. So this is nice to make a strong structure. And you also, uh, I think that the four side came from here, mm -hmm. the, up to mm -hmm. the mast. So uh, when you are maneuvering the anchor, you've got no front um, or side disturbing you. Usually this part is all the way there. So it makes a little bit of a mess in between anchor cable and sailing equipment. This yeah. actually has a cover, so it's not a, like a big scoop. It has yeah, a nice true. cover that we're gonna try to make as waterproof as possible. But if water does get in, there is a tube to let any water Go out. Go straight out. And yeah. this anchor locker is totally closed off to the cabin, so no yeah. water can get inside the boat. It just goes right out yeah. this tube. You know, in, in Brazil, uh, it's not, this is not a copper dam, but if you see on that boat, for example, mm -hmm. the four part by law, is need to be water tightened. So mm -hmm. you can cut out the, 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 the bow of the boat and it will be floating. So when we first bought this boat with her original hull, she was actually tipping forward in the hull. So she was a little okay. bit heavy in the bow. So we did the modifications knowing that we were going to add to the stern, the lazarette into the stern to give it a little bounce. We're going to lose the engine. So we wanted to give even more balance to it. So we did know that we were going to consciously put a lot of weight into the stern to balance out that. She always has sat really high on the water, so we did want to add a little balance. In our in our episode when we were when we were sailing her here, she just was very light. Given she didn't have any interior, when we felt that she was very light despite all of the additions that we made. Yeah, this is something uh, as I told you before, uh, it's not worthful to make all the calculations and simulations just to um, see in advance what we will be seeing anyway when we put her at the water. But yeah, you are adding a little bit more than 300 kilos at the stern, which is nice because we compensate the tendency to put the, the bow low. And yes, we are overall, we are adding weight at the boat. So we are increasing the water line and until a certain limit is also nice because you are putting the boat more stable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you are adding drag, of course, decreasing the, the speed. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's an uh, exchange that is worthful yeah. to make. At every section of the boat, you've seen all of our modifications, what we raised, what we added, what we took out, what we didn't need, what we needed. And what is your overall feeling now of the Lahakai? Do you think she's seaworthy? I think so. Yeah, my overall feeling is that a strong boat is a strong boat. It has a nice future ahead. The What's the name? The Davids. The Davids. For me, they, they stuck, but just about the the prettiness, if I may say, the mm -hmm. aesthetic of the boat, not about the structural or something like this. So if you, the owner, mm -hmm. are happy with the aesthetic of mm -hmm. them, leave it like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. If there is another concern on your mind, then we, we rethink about it. Yeah, but on the overall, it seems like pretty really usual sailing boat. Yeah, mm -hmm. not a racer, but a, a comfortable <laughs> a sailing heavy boat. Girl, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, but you know, heavy is safe mm -hmm. when you've got rough seas. It seems to me that it's a pretty, in Brazil we say uh, marinheiro. Yeah, it's a boat who has a um, capacity to be safe in a lot of sea states. Yeah, kind mm -hmm. of waves and stuff like that. You are on the right path. Yeah, there's a long path ahead. Yeah, but long path, so. yeah, I'm. Uh, looking forward to, to be following you guys and see the sea trial. Nice. Yeah, yeah you're invited. <laughs> Thank you. Have you. A practice <laughs>